As I mentioned to our young people in the children's time, the two things that I remember clearest about Zacchaeus from my days in uh, kindergarten was that Zacchaeus was a, a wee little man and that being chief tax collector, he was a great thief. Um, I always know that Wednesday night youth group is successful when after the Bible study, one of the kids will say, my head hurts. I want to see if I can replicate that today. Luke 19 at verse 1. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. Pause there. As we have been for weeks and yes, even months, been looking at the journey narrative of Luke's gospel, that narrative comes to a close today. He reaches Jerusalem. Way back, we heard the text tell us that it was time for Jesus to go to heaven And so he set his face to Jerusalem. And y'all have heard me reference this many times. Well, thankfully today is the last day that you get to hear that. This is the end of the travel log, but Luke wants us to remember we are on a travel log. And that is a way that Luke references the teaching by the journey. And each spot, uh, Jesus addresses something differently and, and Luke organizes the thoughts based on where Jesus is. Well, he's almost at Jerusalem. This is his last stop. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there who wanted to see who Jesus was because he was short. He could not see over the crowd. The text in the literal Greek says... Zacchaeus wanted to see Jesus, but could not, quote, for he was too short. Difficulty with that is, in the Greek, a pronoun refers to the noun antecedent. A pronoun, he, always refers to the noun that went right before it. The first noun you come to, Zacchaeus could not see Jesus. Why? Because Jesus was too short. And the church has had trouble with that for centuries. And so we break the rules of grammar in order to make Jesus a tall and handsome figure. Difficulty is the Bible says different from Isaiah 53 verse 2 halfway through. He had not beauty or majesty, to attract us to him. Now this is prophecy of Jesus from the prophet Isaiah. Nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. Nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. In fact, one of the earliest objections to Jesus as the idea of a Messiah came from a Jewish critic who said, how in the world could the Son of God be so short in stature? We don't like that. I grew up with my grandmother having that traditional portrait of Jesus with the, yeah, that one, with the long blonde hair. And I mean, nice looking guy, but that's not the Lord. And one of the reasons, besides maybe messing with your mind, one of the reasons I want to point this out to you is that when Jesus came, he came as the Son of God, but also as the Son of Man. And as the Son of Man, there was nothing in him that we could look at and based on appearance say, I want to follow him. It has to be a work of God in him. We're going to see God work in this guy, in Zacchaeus. But don't think it's because Jesus is tall and handsome and good looking. The prophecy about him was he was not going to be. And the objections in the day was, well, that can't be. Well, short Zacchaeus. You know, I 
you, you can't believe how difficult it was for me because I always assumed the taller the man, the better. And my New Testament professor, who stood about that tall, had a high squeaky voice, told about the time that somebody came to hear him preach, a friend, and couldn't get close enough down front to see him, so he went up into the balcony. And afterwards, he said, I had to go to the balcony to see you, Fred. And Fred said, why? You're not short. There, there's a joke there somewhere, <laughs> if, if you'll just take time. I mean, we're not following a Savior because He looks like a Savior. Isn't that the problem that the prophet had when he went looking at Jesse's sons for the king of Israel? And he finally, he starts with the older brother, the handsome, tall, strong. Now this surely can be a king of Israel. Nope, not him. And he works his way down until he gets the scrawny teenager out on the back 40 taking care of the sheep. And God says, you anoint that one. You look on the outside, I look on the inward. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but he could not. For he was too short and could not see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him. Since Jesus was coming that way. Pause there. One of the things that I think you and I, and especially me, needs to get firmly in our mind. Is the idea that before anybody shares Jesus with somebody... God is actually at work in that person. Now, being a Methodist, I know that's part of our basic understanding of salvation. Before anybody even speaks, God's already at work. Jesus put it this way. Nobody comes to me unless the Father draws him. And you see that. I remember years ago hearing a preacher preach that 20 years before this event, God planted that sycamore fig tree right in the right location just so Zacchaeus would have something to climb when he needed. Well, now, whether or not that's true, I'm going to tell you, God is already at work. And sometimes we'll look at people and we'll think, nobody can touch that person. And God's already been at work at that person's life. Just assume Anytime you want to tell someone about the goodness of God or demonstrate it by your actions, God's already ahead of you. God's already there first. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but he was short. He could not see over the crowd, so he ran ahead, climbed a sycamore, a sick, climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him since Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. Now, Jesus is choosing to be the guest of a sinner. At least one identified publicly as being a sinner. Isn't this the same story, basically, as Luke 15, when you have the three stories of lost items, the lost sheep, the lost coin, the lost son? And it all starts because he not only makes friends with tax collectors and sinners, he eats with them. All the people saw this. And began to mutter, 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 mutter. He has gone to be the guest of a sinner. But Jesus, but Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, look, Lord, here and now. Pause. The Greek doesn't have here and now. That's interpretation. You remember how messed up it hurt, it felt when I told you when you heard the idea that it may have been Jesus who was short, not Zacchaeus? Well, guess what? Tradition has done it again. In the Greek, there is no here and now. 
And instead of being future tense, what Zacchaeus actually does say is current tense, present tense. He's referencing something he already is doing. Here and now, not in the Greek, I give current tense. I already give. I am giving half of my possessions to the poor. And if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. I used to snicker when I read that text. And if I cheated anybody, anything. And then I found out the practice was, you know how they picked who would be chief tax collector? They'd get all the tax collectors together and says, who will give us the most in taxes right now? And then go out and collect. And Zacchaeus bought the job by giving ahead of time the amount of money. And so he has to guesstimate how much it's going to take from each person to make up the total. And he's saying, and if, not only will I already give half of everything, I've been doing it and will continue, but if by accident I accidentally overcharge somebody something, I'm going to restore it fourfold. That was from Hebrew scripture, what you do in case of theft. I'll go ahead and do it. Jesus said to him, Today, salvation has come to this house because this man too is the son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The point of the story is this. You cannot look at someone and know they're standing before God. Over in Romans, Paul says, Who are you to judge another man's servant? To his own master he stands or falls. The point of the text is, this guy is an occupational outcast. The story right before his was the healing of a blind man. He was an outcast because of physical limitation. And Zacchaeus is an outcast because of an occupational position. Let me reference it this way. My daddy's favorite joke was two guys walking through a cemetery. They see a tombstone. The tombstone says, here lies a lawyer and an honest man. One guy turns to the other and says, space really must be tight in this cemetery. (laughs) You know the difficulty with that? My daddy was a lawyer. The day I was born, he was judge of the county we lived in. And yet that was his favorite joke because nobody could believe a lawyer was an honest man. It's just sort of understood, even if he was family. Problem is, Zacchaeus is not a sinner. Yes, He comes to salvation today. Yes, he has been open to the move of God. But he doesn't reach salvation until he opens his heart to Jesus. The point is not Zacchaeus has been engaged in sin. The point is the people assume it and make him an outcast. And only God looks at the heart. If it had not been for Jesus calling him out of the tree. The whole community would have let him live and die thinking he was this terrible sinner. But the point is, Jesus asks everybody to be saved. All of us. The people that were pointing their fingers at Zacchaeus and muttering. You remember the text? Mutter, 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 mutter. Those people needed Jesus as much as Zacchaeus. But the trouble is, I, 
possibly somebody else you know, likes to look at the sins of others and somehow see that as being worse than our own. Proverbs 21, 2, every way of a man looks right in his own eyes, but God weighs the heart. We have gotten caught up in the idea that some sins are acceptable. The acceptable sins are our sins. Oh, yes, I, I eat a little too much, and bless God, we had to buy new clothes yesterday for me to fit. But that's an acceptable sin because it's mine. But your sin, no. God's calling us all to repent. God in Christ Jesus is willing to save anyone. He reaches out to everyone. He sees all. But the difficulty is all of us need a Savior. None of us can be good in and of ourselves. And Zacchaeus is the classic example. Everyone just knew he was a thief. Trouble was, his current practice had already been 50%, not 10%. 50% of his income goes to God by taking care of the poor. 50%. And if by accident something is taken, collected more than should have been, it's restored just like it was theft. Fourfold. Don't judge anyone. Understand that all of us need a Savior. And before we ever speak to anyone, realize God's at work in that person, bringing them to the place that they're open to a Savior. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Lord sits before us at table, and being the Sunday after all saints, we remember there is a great cloud of witnesses who are already giving God glory, and we join what they are doing currently. Our hymn, our, our invitation is found on page 12 in your hymnal. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him. Pause there. You do not have to be a member of this congregation. You do not have to be a member of this denomination to be welcome at Jesus' table. You simply have to be willing to receive what Jesus offers. And if you are, at this table, you are welcome. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. We continue with the great thanksgiving on page 13. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. 
Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood, by your spirit. Make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory. And we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen.